Hello, this is Darren Alf from BicycleTouringPro.com and today I'm going to show you a lightweight bike touring setup that you can use for local bike tours near your home, for cycling across an entire city, state, or country, or a setup like this could be used to cycle all the way around the world. What you're seeing in this video is a Comotion Pangea touring bicycle equipped with front and rear fenders, three water bottles, a rear kickstand, two Ortlib bike packer waterproof panniers, and a waterproof Ortlib handlebar bag. When I first started bicycle touring, I didn't really know what I was doing and I brought a lot of things with me on my first bike tours that I never even used. All that extra gear took up a lot of space on my bicycle and really weighed me down, making my first bike tours a whole lot harder than they needed to be. Unfortunately, this is the mistake that many first-time bicycle tourists make. They overpack and they carry far too many things that they don't really need. Since I've now been bike touring for more than 16 years all around the world and have cycled across dozens and dozens of countries on multiple continents, I've learned which items are essential to bike touring success and which items are not. So today I'm going to show you how to pack a touring bicycle for a long distance bike tour that could really take you anywhere in the world. To start, uh, let's take a look inside the handlebar bag. Handlebar bags are great because they allow you to access your important and most used items in a quick and easy manner. Inside your handlebar bag, you might carry a hat, a lightweight journal, a pair of sunglasses in a lightweight protective case, street maps, a smartphone, which you can use for navigation, entertainment, etc. And uh, you might also be carrying your front and rear lights, which you really only need to place on your bicycle when you need them. There's a zippered pocket inside this particular handlebar bag, and attached to this pocket is a small lanyard where you can attach a spare key for your bike lock. Inside the zippered pocket, you might keep your passport, a pen, your wallet, a spork to eat with, obviously, and a small folding knife. On the outside of the handlebar bag are two small zippered pockets. On one side of the bag, you might keep two plastic tire levers and a lightweight patch kit. In the pocket on the other side, you can carry some lip balm, your multi-tool, a small lighter, and a spoke wrench. On the back of the bicycle is a voltaic 6 watt solar panel, which you can use to keep your smartphone and bike lights charged up while you're cycling on the road. The solar panel attaches to your rear rack with a bungee cord, and then the panniers mount to the rack after you've secured the solar panel in place. Having the solar panel isn't really necessary, and you could certainly save some weight from your bicycle by getting rid of it, but it definitely comes in handy if you plan to use your smartphone a lot, or if you think you might go for several days without having access to a power outlet. In the pannier on your bicycle's left side, I recommend you carry an inflatable sleeping pad, a bike lock, a bicycle pump, a one-man tent, and a three-season sleeping bag. All of that goes inside one large pannier. On the outside of that rear pannier, there's a small pocket where you can carry some of your additional but rarely used bike tools, such as chain lube, spare brake or derailleur cables, a lightweight pedal wrench, spare brake pads and handlebar tape, which can also be used for a plethora of other things. Finally, inside your rear right pannier, you're going to want to be carrying all of your personal belongings. In addition to the clothes that you're going to be wearing on your bicycle, which probably will consist of a helmet, shoes, shorts, and a jersey of some kind, you'll also want to be packing a compact fleece jacket to keep yourself warm both on and off the bicycle, a toiletry kit, consisting of a camp towel, toothbrush and toothpaste, deodorant, soap, razor, shaving cream, etc. A half roll of toilet paper, a couple extra pairs of socks, one or more spare bike tubes, a pair of gloves, which are optional but are nice to have, especially in colder weather, an electricity converter, which you really only need if you're planning to travel in a foreign country, a small lightweight camp stove and pot, which again is optional and certainly not required, a few spare shirts to wear both on and off the bike, one or more pairs of underwear, some lightweight fleece pants to sleep in, a 
pair of pants to wear off the bike at night, a pair of waterproof rain pants, and a lightweight rain jacket. It's important to note that while the rear left pannier is filled to the top with camping equipment, the rear right pannier is really only about halfway full. This is extremely important as you need to save space inside your panniers for food, drinks, and any other items you might pick up along the way. So make sure that you save some space inside your panniers when you're packing. You should probably have at least a half to a third of one of your panniers empty and save for food storage. So there you have it, a lightweight bike touring setup you can use for local bike tours or long distance cycling adventures around the world. To see a detailed breakdown of this full packing list and to learn more about conducting your own incredible bike tours anywhere in the world, visit the website at bicycletouringpro.com or grab a copy of The Bicycle Touring Blueprint, which is the world's best book about how to plan, prepare for, and execute the bicycle tour of your dreams. So I'm on a big island right now. The town that I was staying in is behind me and I have about 15-20 kilometers to cycle across the island to the ferry terminal. And from there I'm going to take a ferry for like two hours to this town called Celie or something like that, which is to the north. And from there I'll cycle uh, east towards the city of Trondheim over the next week. So that's the plan today is get on that ferry. It leaves at 10 o'clock. Uh, like I said, 15, 20 kilometers up here. So that's why I'm leaving so early in the morning. Gotta catch that ferry.